Hey everybody, welcome back to Heel Toes YouTube channel. This is Marcus DiSabella. I'm the owner here and I have something cool to share with you today. The CT Engineering uh, Supercharger Kit for K-Series engines. This kit was actually designed for a first generation TSX. It's pretty similar to the 8th gen Civic SI kit, but for the most part, these blower kits were available for um, RSXs and Civic SIs and even later TSXs, 9th gen Civics, uh, a lot of K-series platforms, but they are discontinued now. You can't get them anymore, and finding a kit that's complete is pretty difficult. Sometimes you can find it on eBay or Facebook Marketplace or in group forums or something like that, um, but mine came from a really special source. I thought before I did anything with it, it would be cool to share with you all the different parts that are included so that if you ever do find one of these kits for yourself, you can go down the checklist of parts that are there and make sure you're getting a complete package or at least know what you'll need to backfill when you, know, you inevitably find out that you don't have everything that you need. So check it out. I'm gonna bring you through this whole kit and we're gonna cover it for you right here. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them below and like and subscribe while you're down there. If you're not familiar with what a supercharger kit is, sometimes they're called a blower, but basically what it is, it forces air into the engine. There's a pump that's turned by a, by a belt drive that pressurizes air coming in through the air filter and it crams it in the engine to give you boost, so to speak, which is a raise in pressure over the air that would normally be going into the engine if you just open the throttle without there being any boost at all. Atmospheric pressure, the pressure of all the air on top of us is about 14.7 PSI. When you add boost to an engine, you're increasing above that. So without boost, when you open the throttle, the throttle plate opens and 14.7 pounds of pressure forces air into the engine. Of course, the engine is running, so it has this sucking effect, but really what it's doing is atmospheric air is going into there. Um, when you're adding boost, you're actually putting more than the 14.7. So like eight pounds of boost, for example, would put in 22.7 pounds into the engine. And so raising the boost actually is putting more air in that has more oxygen molecules, which then in turn gives you more power. CT Engineering used to be known as Comtech. Actually, it was a different company. Comtech was founded in the 90s by a group of people that really were basically race car engineers. They built IndyCar engines and all kinds of other performance engine stuff for Honda and uh, in their racing efforts. You could kind of think of like the modern day HRC or HPD. Comtech used to do a lot of that work for Honda on a contract basis. So these were really smart guys building cool race car stuff for Honda the factory. At a certain point, they decided it was time to enter into the private market. And so they built parts like you know, intakes, these supercharger kits, exhaust systems, headers, all kinds of different things. They made parts for the, the NSX, they made parts for TSXs, RSXs, a few different types of Accords. A lot of Honda and Acura sports models got a Comtech treatment, which might be springs, sway bars, brake upgrades, etc. cetera. Uh, but definitely the crowning thing was the supercharger kit. Everything here was initially designed by guys who basically built race car engines. So pretty highly uh, coveted parts. They were well designed. They're meant to fit on the car directly. And on top of that, they were meant to be installed by Honda dealers that were certified to do work for Comtech. And that even was supposed to maintain some level of the factory warranty. So when you were back in the uh, 2000s or the late 90s and you had Comtech on your car, it was basically the best that you could get. So here we have the complete kit. This kit was actually bought by heel toe from Comtech back in the day, sold to a person, they used it for many years, and when they were done with it, after they wrecked their car, they donated it back to us, and that's why we have all these parts here. He was a pretty meticulous guy as well, so he took pretty good care of all of these things, and it should be pretty much ready to go onto my car. But before I did that, let's take a, a look at all the different pieces that are involved. Let's start with the blower unit, which is the most exciting piece out of the whole thing. So this is the blower unit. And as you can see, it's got some bulk to it. Um, this is a, the belt driven section over here. And what you see is these screws inside actually turn when the belt drives it. There isn't a lot of resistance here, but it does take a little bit of force to turn. And that's that parasitic uh, power drag that you're gonna get with a supercharger. Um, in here is the air inlet. 
the throttle body would bolt onto here with this intake tube that would draw in air. So air comes in here, it goes through these screws and gets pressurized. And that pressure is then forced through the intake manifold, which is here, right? The manifold bolts to the engine. And when the air is forced into this area from, from basically here, you can see the blower mounts. The blower is actually going to mount directly to the manifold, just like this. Yeah, so when, when this spins, it'll pressurize the air that's coming in through the throttle body and force it into the engine through this manifold. All right, so this is mimicking the factory manifold flange layout, and that's basically it. I mean, we have some other tubes and things like that that are for coolant lines and whatnot, um, but for the most part, once you have a manifold and a blower and a belt to drive it, you've got a supercharged setup. A few details about the blower, some other componentry that you'll find here. You see there's an actuator on the side here. This is a bypass valve. Now the engine is always running, so that means that this blower would always be spinning. But you're not always trying to make boosts. Sometimes at idle or just slow cruising around, you're not trying to actually throw a lot of boost into the engine. Another time is when you're on the freeway and you've got steady state cruising, you don't need to be boosting along that whole time. So what this bypass valve does, it reads vacuum, and when you're not on the gas, when the bypass valve opens up by vacuum, air coming into the throttle body will just go straight into the manifold and it won't go through the blower unit itself. And so that prevents there being boost when you don't really need it. It's better for efficiency and honestly it'll help the engine last longer too. This supercharger kit came with two pulleys. You'll see that this pulley is a little bit smaller diameter than the one that's already on the blower. A smaller diameter pulley driven by the same belt is gonna actually spin a little bit faster. A faster spinning pulley means a faster spinning blower and that means a little bit more boost. And that's why this is called a high boost pulley. Supercharger pulleys that are smaller than normal one deliver more boost to the engine, a little bit more performance. That's more PSI giving you a little bit more power. This other pulley is a power steering pulley, and this is gonna replace the factory power steering pulley, and mostly this is for packaging concerns because all this other stuff that we're adding to the engine does require the belt to be routed in a little bit of a different way. And so the power steering pulley gets replaced as part of installing this CT engineering kit. One thing that's interesting that isn't part of the original kit is this bracket. This bracket doesn't actually have any branding or anything on it, but I know actually that this is a Merck Racing power steering relocation bracket. The reason why this kit comes with this bracket is because the original kit that Comtech provided used a new tensioner. Because this belt layout is going to be different and there's packaging concerns again with all the components fitting under the hood, Comtech would provide you with a new tensioner for the belt, a new automatic tensioner. But that was famously unreliable, so people needed to get new ones all the time and in order to absolve people from having to do that, Merck Racing came out with this bracket that relocates the power steering pulley a little bit in such a way that you can continue to use the factory belt tensioner. The factory belt tensioners are a lot more reliable than the one that Comtech provided. So there is no belt tensioner here as part of this kit as originally there would be, but this bracket means that I don't need it. Merck Racing still sells this bracket, so if you do come up with a supercharger kit that uh, has tensioner issues, you could still get this bracket. We've also got a couple of little spacers here that are meant to relocate the factory fuel rail. So this kit is designed to work with the factory fuel rail, but because of the arrangement of this manifold and needing to make room for the blower, the fuel rail from the factory setup needs to be mounted in a slightly different way. And these brackets help make sure that that is accomplished without any issues. You'll notice that there's some stuff that's actually not here. Normally when you're going to boost an engine, there's upgraded fuel injectors, maybe an upgraded fuel pump, and what about fuel management? None of that really is coming with this kit because it was meant to be carb emissions exempt and changing a lot of those things was going to really create some challenges for Comtech in getting that exemption certified. So it's meant to be used with the factory fuel injectors and the factory fuel pump. That doesn't mean they can't be upgraded though, which would definitely be a wise idea in a set of setup like this. You're gonna get more out of the car by having a finer control over the fuel, and that means having better fuel injectors that can deliver more fuel and work at a more appropriate duty cycle. So how is this car tuned in the first place? In order to run boost, you have to have more fuel being delivered. The factory computer wasn't really set up to handle that. 
So how did they fix that? Comtech provided with this kit a plug-in unit called an ACM. The ACM is actually designed to alter the sensor readings going in and out of the factory computer to kind of fool it into running properly under boost. It's a really rudimentary way of tuning this setup, but again, in order to keep it emissions exempt, they were kind of handcuffed in what they could do in terms of tuning the vehicle. Hondata has reflashes for the supercharging kit with a certain spec injector and whatnot. And also you could always use a Hondata Flash Pro to custom tune to your needs, which is exactly what we're gonna be doing in this TSX. Some other parts that came along with this kit that I would like to point out is obviously the beautiful carbon fiber injector cover that um, goes right up over here and gives a nice dress up to the engine. Um, and complementing that is the carbon CT ice box, which my car has one of these already. Uh, the carbon ice box was really kind of a special piece that they only made a few of. Uh, Comtech didn't make tons of these ice boxes before discontinuing the product. It was fairly expensive back then and I suspect I'll get more than a few people in the comments asking where they can get one today. On that topic, you may or may not realize that CT intake still exists even though the company has gone out of business. Heeltoe bought the tooling and the rights to produce CT intakes way back in 2018 and so we are producing these kits today. Uh, we didn't get all the tooling or every single design that we that we needed in order to make every single intake so that's why some of these carbon ones aren't actually available right now but we're working on chipping away and getting some more of these intakes to market as time goes by. So there you have it. That's the CT Engineering Supercharger Kit. You'll notice that there are detailed instructions here on my desk. These instructions are used to install the kit and as well there is a detailed checklist of everything that should be included with this kit. So I have actual digital links to these that I'll put down in the description so that you can download the, the uh, checklist yourself and make sure that whatever kit you might actually have found is going to come with pretty much everything that you need. Uh, so that's it. This CT Engineering Supercharger Kit is going to go on my TSX. i got to replace the factory manifold, the, the intake, all of this stuff has to come out and so we can put this blower in and I'm expecting that's going to be a really pretty cool setup when it's done. Um, I've never installed one of these blower kits on a TSX before. I've done one on a TL long ago and I remember the installation being kind of a breeze. I'll make sure to document the installation of this supercharger on my TSX so you can see how that goes, learn what any pitfalls are, and again make sure that when you're buying a kit for your own Honda Acura that you know what to expect in terms of parts that you may need that you may or may not be missing. So that's a whole ton of information about superchargers, the CT engineering, maybe a little bit of the history behind the kit, why you want it, all kinds of great stuff. And don't forget, you learned it all here at Heel Toe. Please, please, please make sure you subscribe to this video and like it if you found it helpful in any way. Leave any comments that you have below. I'll be sure to get back with you. That's Heel Toe in your corner. It's time to shift up.